So we're going to look at the development disk sander right now. The, <clears throat> the name indicates you know, the style of, of uh, machine that we have. On this side is a disk, a sand, like a sandpaper disk that spins this way. On this side we have a belt. It runs down like this. You can see as I'm turning it, this belt is always moving down towards this table. So we have two different tables here. A table here and a table here. Both of these tables are, are uh, able to be tilted. We don't really do this very often, but if we're trying to uh, sand a bevel on a piece of wood, we can loosen this thing and change the angle at which it rests in relation to the bevel. Right, so I can set it like that. If I'm trying to get a bevel on some part of the wood, and I can adjust this one similarly this way, Loose enough. Oh boy, doesn't want to cooperate. Yeah. Well, I have to take it on faith. There we go. I can adjust that down if I'm trying to get the, the wood to have an angle this way on it in relation to the to the face of the wood. Whoops. Zero. Most of the time, though, it's, it's always, all, most all the time, we use them set in their, their zero position there, or their 90 degrees to the sanding surface. Uh, in general, the sanding belt is a rougher texture, a, a uh, rougher grit, maybe about a 60 grit sandpaper. This is often about 80 or 100 grit sandpaper here, so it's going to take off less material in the same amount of time. Um, so we would do maybe rougher sanding here, trying to take away more stuff, a little finer sanding on this side. One of the things we want to be sure of is that we're not doing a tremendous amount of wood removal using the sander. Okay, we want to use it to smooth down the wood, to fix up our angles, but in this case I've already cut a curve on here using the bandsaw. Right? So that's the way if I want to take away a large amount of material, more than about a sixteenth of an inch of material, I'm going to cut it away with the bandsaw first, or some other other machine, and then use a sand sanding machine just to take away a fine amount here. If I'm trying to smooth down, say these little uh, ridges that are here from the from the saw. Okay. The other thing is that we want to make sure we're not trying to, to use too small of a piece of material. If I have a if I have a little tiny piece of wood here that involves my hand getting too close to this belt. That's going to be really dangerous. I don't want to get my hand up against the belt. And I want to um, always operate with my material laying on this table. Okay, I'm not going to take it and go like this on the sanding belt. That's really risky. The tendency is for it to get grabbed and shoved downwards suddenly, and that's, that's bad. Another thing that's, that's a real common mistake is for people to sand on this side of the disc. Okay? The disc is going to move this direction. Right? If I put my wood here, it's got two issues. One, it tries to throw stuff right in my face as I'm doing it, that whatever material comes off here gets thrown up into my face. The other is that it tries to grab the wood and, and pull it away from you like that. Right? And that's, that's a bad thing too. So <clears throat> the, sand, the sander generates a lot of dust. And so anytime we're using this sander, I've got it connected up to the, to the dust collector over here. Let's see the dust collector. So before I start, I'm going to turn on the dust collector and make sure it comes up and make sure that these hoses are connected properly. Once in a while they get knocked off. So I can see now this is connected. In the back here I've got a little door that controls the airflow through those hoses. I've got that opened up so I can get flow from the machine to the dust collector. So we'll fire this up and I'll try to do some sanding.
So you might notice a couple things about what I was doing. First of all, most recently, at the end of me using this, I shut it off, I press the stop button, I want to wait several seconds until all this comes to a complete stop. You can see that it's coasting, it's still spinning after the motor's been turned off, it coasts for a little while, it's still dangerous at that point, it'd be really easy for somebody to come up, reach up here, and get hurt. So I'm going to stand right here and make sure it comes to a complete stop. Once that's done, I can go shut off the, the uh, dust collector. Um, a couple things about when you're doing this curve shape here, I'm not going to sit in one place and just sand just one spot. I'm steadily moving that wood back and forth so that I don't end up with a flat spot on that curve. If I've got the, the flat wheel and I just push straight up against it, I'm going to get a flat place there. In this case, I wanted a nice rounded curve, so I had to steadily move back and forth across the sanding surface. Again, working on this side of the wheel so that it's moving downwards there. And <clears throat> on this end here, I want to move back and forth across here so that I don't put excess wear on one part of the belt. I want to, if I'm using this belt, I want to try to get even wear across the belt so I move the thing back and forth um, while, while sanding. And <clears throat> it may be hard to tell in the video, but there were some little grooves here from the cutting I did with the bandsaw. Now those are gone. It's, uh, it's pretty smooth. Um, if I wanted this to be smoother yet, I'd get some, some finer sandpaper and start sanding it this way to follow that grain pattern. And uh, you can make that grain look really nice with a lot of sanding. Um, but as it is right now, I've at least gotten it smoothed out. The curve is smooth and the, the uh, marks from the, sand, the saw are gone. Um, a couple other things to uh, be aware of. You can use a miter gauge for this machine, just like the uh, saws. So I can put this miter gauge here in this miter gauge groove, and I can, um, adjust, I can adjust the angle that the wood is sitting at on here. If I want a particular angle where I want to sand it, I can do that like that. Same thing on this side. Put this here and adjust the angle with the miter gauge. We saw how we can tilt the table one way or the other, and the power switch is down here. That's pretty much it. Uh, most of the time there's a guard here on top. You're going to want to keep that in place all the time when you're using it. And if you see something going wrong, like this disc is coming loose and flapping around, or the edge on this is getting all torn up, or the dip belt actually starting to move to one side or the other when it's running, that's something you need to talk to the teacher about and get him to adjust this properly. Otherwise, that's going to cause problems. Anyway, so that's the belt and disc sander. Thank you for your kind attention.